Possibly, yes. But that doesn't matter right now. What matters is where we stand, where are we going, right? And another thing that, that was a little bit laughable was, was, was this person that nobody heard before, this Finnish investor, Thomas Silly or whatever. You know, I really call him Silly. <coughs> Came up with a statement to say that I am willing to go in three billion on my own pockets and the rest should be fans investing through my app that I'm developing and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, there should be a fan base consortium. Yeah, you're selling a pipe dream that everyone wants. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, how long is that going to take? If you put in three billion, right? And you expect, let's see, let's see the maths. You expect, um, let's say, one billion fans to put in three dollars to, to meet the valuation. How long is that going to take? I mean, for me, that was a pure hoax. But anyway, let's let's just uh, let's just let's just. Oh, well, actually, I can actually play the video like that. That was. Oh, yeah. Another thing, like I do respect the United States as a fellow content creator, but this for me was a little bit strange. As Thomas Zelensky appeared. On the clock, that they walk away with you know a billion or two on top of what the cut really is worth because we are outbidding each others. That is correct. If Glazes are walking away with six billion, that is not correct because they didn't invest jack shit, to be honest. But listen to his rant here. Listen to, and we're going to dissect what he's actually saying because part of that initial conversation was to say that that's not part of this clip that he was saying that, you know, part of the reason is also about you have a lot of uh, investors not from Europe that don't understand European football treating and buying clubs as their own toy now, for me that is a little bit of a walking through a dangerous line of xenophobia you know you have a lot of foreign ownership that are successful in owning football clubs and yeah you know what i mean but let's continue watching this and have a little bit laugh or take it seriously so why don't we join forces we make a decent offer to the current owners based on what the club really is worth and all of us thereby say two-thirds of what we would have been willing to pay. That two-thirds, which then represents, I don't know, anything between six and ten billion, that money could be used for the benefit of the club. And like I said, for me to share ownership with, uh, with the two other main competitors, I don't see anything negative in that. On the contrary... Of course, you, Thomas, you don't see any negative of that because, you know, you get a lot of exposure by doing so. But, you know... Look at it from a football operational side, you know, to have co-ownership. What you're proposing is similar to what Todd Bowley did with Chelsea. How's that working? Let's continue watching this. Because none of us is doing this to earn a lot of money. We are doing this because we love the club. Uh, excuse me. None of us is doing this to earn money. We're doing this for the love of the club. That is sheer bullshit, right? You, sorry, calling a spade a spade, right? So... Yeah, if, if you're Sir Jim Ratcliffe, if you are yourself, right, you're there to earn money in the long run, you know, because you're private in investors, you're private owners. If you look at uh, the likes of any Middle Eastern owner, they're not looking to make any money. In the, they're looking to use this as a PR tool, what everyone knows. But anyway, let's continue. So with three, you know, three, three main shareholders who love the club and who are willing to do what the club needs, I think that would be a perfect situation for the club, for the fans, and for the players. Yeah, it might be a perfect situation for the club and the players. It's always been a dream that you, you have a certain percent of fan ownership. But if you look at it, nobody in the Premier League has this model. Yeah, you have a presidential voting right where you have fan-based ownership in La Liga, in Spain, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Bayern Munich. But it's a totally different league. You know, Premier League is big enough to, to generate revenue. So, yeah. There might be a certain percentage to have a fan-based ownership. But let's continue. Like It's just my opinions, right? So you have reached out to these parties, but I'm assuming you've not heard back yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't heard back yet. And, and look, I mean, maybe they don't share my vision. Maybe they do want to be the, the only owner. But I must say that... It... No shit. They haven't returned back. So why would they uh, go into a uh, three-horse three uh, ownership race? Like, to be honest... You know, this is just sheer complication for me. Like, you know, if you have a consortium, you have three different investors and owners with different voting rights, you will never get to a winning ways. There will always be conflicts and interest, voting 
it would be like a political party, like like a Congress. You know, you need to pass the bills. So yeah, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Silly. That was a great hoax from your side, and thank you for appearing on a fan base channel to you know get more publicity about yourself, guys. Um, it is crazy times. It is been. It is everything that we can imagine it to be. But at the end of the day, just hold your powder dry and let it transpire. Make it popcorn. It's weekend. Enjoy yourself and let things play its course, right? Don't believe in the hypes and the media spin. I understand that you want to know everything that's going on every single day, every single minute. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? We know who's in the race. We know that the winning bid right now is on six billion. The facts that I presented here is kind of logical. It might be controversial. Um, but all I'm saying is, for me, it's all about protecting the badge, you know, protecting the fan base as a global fan base. We don't want to get hurt, but we can certainly scrutinize each bidder and each winner in this bid, in this race, you know, once it's done. Yeah, it's not over until the contract is signed and been announced. You know, if it's, you know, a Qatari ownership, if it might be a Dubai ownership, if it might be a US ownership, we will find out but not certainly from the sports journalists because they are sports journalists for a certain reason. I'm more looking at uh, things coming up from Bloomberg. I'm looking at from coming up from Forbes, Financial Times. I'm looking at the stock market as well in terms of spikes and curves because that is realistic science, right? Guys, stay beautiful to each other. Be nice to each other on the social. It's Saturday. Please relax, you know, I'm sure you will not hear any more transfer updates since it's Ramadan, it's weekend. Happy Ramadan for all you Muslims out there. Ramadan Karim and be nice to each other on socials. This is Mick Ruby from MUFC Realist TV with a morning update show or reflection with a cup of Java. Guys, like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Peace. Salam. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.